Hi, I'm Erin. I'm a mom, wife, market farmer, and a farmer's market market manager. This is my busiest time of the year right now, and I often have to be all of those at the same time. I'm gonna show you what a day in my life looks like as I work in the gardens, take care of the family, and attend a city council meeting as we prepare for National Farmers Market Week on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Everybody knows that Mike and I are busy. You guys see it three times a week here on YouTube. And one of the most common questions that I hear at Farmer's Market is how do you have time to do all of this? I don't really have an answer for that question except for that we get up early every day, do the work that needs to be done, and we go to bed when the work is done. This time of the year, I'm running on fumes. This next couple of weeks is going to be insanely busy here on the ranch. Our farm to table dinner is fast approaching and this week at Farmer's Market, we are celebrating National Farmer's Market Week. Our local market is one of 10 markets that has been featured this year during National Farmer's Market Week by the National Farmer's Market Coalition. This was a huge honor for our market to receive this recognition. This week at market, we are also hosting our second annual cookware drive. Donations of pots, pans, utensils, or dishes can be brought to market and all the items will be donated to our local Council of Community Services and then passed along to people in need of cookware and kitchen utensils. This fills a huge need in our community. Cookware can sometimes be a huge hurdle to overcome when you're struggling with food insecurity. A new pot, a skillet, measuring cups can make cooking at home a whole lot easier and more enjoyable. If you have the right tools to prepare food at home, budgeting and healthy eating becomes much easier and more manageable. We're hoping that our second cookware drive is a huge success. Last year we collected 12 huge totes of cookware and with any luck this year we can increase the amount. Market is really needy of my time right now, but the gardens still need me too. And of course the kids need my time and attention as well. I'm going to show you my day as I move from gardens to kids to city council meetings and everything in between. Almost every day in the summer, the alarm goes off way earlier than is enjoyable or even tolerable. I get up, have some coffee and quiet time before the kids awaken, and then it's off to work. Mike and I juggle work and kids back and forth depending on what needs done. Today, I get the early shift outside as Mike has emails and other YouTube related work to catch up on inside the house. Mike will hang out with the kids until it's time for them to go to Grammy's house, and I head outside to get to work. I make a quick stop at the shop to grab the little gator before I head to the gardens. The seats on the gator love to collect rain and even a little bit amount of dew can provide a wet seat and ultimately a wet bottom. After sitting in water several times, I'm finally getting smart enough to wipe the seat before sitting down. After the water is taken care of, I head to the gardens. Well, not quite. The pigs have only been here for a few days and they need to be checked on throughout the day. Pigs can be naughty, and we need to make sure that they aren't escaping as they settle into their new home. They look good and are sleeping in a typical little pig pile. They're probably annoyed that I woke them up. Back at the gardens, the first thing I like to do is a quick walk through of the little garden. It's full of fall crops and doesn't need much maintenance. But I do like to check that everything is getting enough water. I also like to see how the plants are progressing, and I find a few little pumpkins. This garden is doing great and it's growing as expected. My time this morning is going to be spent in the big garden. There are weeds to pull, but again, a quick walk through lets me know that the crops are doing well. The carrots are weedy and the area next to them used to have radishes planted. The radishes are done, but the bigger weeds need removed before the area can be prepped for more planting. There is no glamorous way to pull weeds. You just have to get down in the dirt and get the work done. It's pretty wet out here because of the sprinklers watering earlier this morning, so it gets a little muddy. It goes pretty fast. The carrots have already been weeded, so they just need a little cleanup, and of course the radish bed doesn't take long since I'm not weeding around other veggies. Once I'm all done, the carrots look clean and pretty, and the tiller can run down the radish bed easily another day. Task one, done. Now back to the house for a bit to see the kids. I head in and our house cat Cheddar escapes for his daily stroll outside. 
He's supposed to stay inside, but he's not cooperating lately. I remove the soil from my hands and hop onto the laptop to take care of a few text messages and emails. The kids are busy playing, so I take advantage of this time to get some work done quickly and quietly. After the busy work is complete, I hang out with the kids and then help them to get ready to go to Grammy's house for the day. Luckily, the commute to Grammy's is just a quick walk up the hill. It's time for the next project on my to-do list. I need some bins, a pitchfork, and a knife. My leaf lettuce has gotten bitter in the heat and some of it's starting to go to seed. It needs to go so that we can make room for more stuff. I'm going to cut some of this lettuce and fill the bins up. This really isn't necessary, but there's a method to my madness. Once I have enough cut, I head back to the pigs. They need a little lettuce treat. They really seem to enjoy it and it sure doesn't last long. Back at the garden, I load the other bins into the gator. This lettuce is destined for the compost bin. This is my first year really doing any composting other than manure. I built this compost bin out of old pallets and tea post. I've been layering in veggie scraps with straw and it's doing its compost thing. Just a few days ago, it was full to the brim and it shrunk down quite a bit. Throw the lettuce in and then I grab some nearby straw from a pile and toss that in with the lettuce. Water is key in the composting process. About once a week, I make sure to soak the compost down. Compost done for now. I try and keep the weeds outside the gardens knocked down so that they don't go to seed and make more weeds. Of course, I use the BCS with the flail mower to get this job done. It, of course, works great. Over in the old high tunnel, unfortunately, I didn't mow the weeds before they got obnoxiously tall, and now I have a mess to deal with. BCS makes quick work of mowing the weeds and doesn't struggle at all with the big weeds. So I mow everything down except for the kale plants that I planted back this spring. They are still growing and doing great, and I figure, what the heck, let's see if they can keep growing and make it through this next winter. Now, there's more weed control to do in here. It's still a disaster even after mowing. Once it dries, I will come back in and I will burn it with a propane torch. This will help further kill the weeds and hopefully take care of some of the weed seeds that are just looking for a new place to grow. But that's a project for another day. One thing that I want to accomplish today is getting the snow fence down. There's lots of weeds and even some alfalfa growing up in it. We used the snow fence to keep the deer out and attaching it to the inside of the tunnel worked great. Now it's time to get, take it down. We need to get everything cleaned up and next week hopefully start working on prepping the high tunnel for a new cover. Mike used zip ties to attach it to the ribs. It comes down easily from the top. Eventually I get them all removed and then I can drag the snow fence into the middle of the tunnel. I roll the snow fence up so that it can be stored until we need it next time. There's still so much to do in here, but at least now you can walk through the middle. <laughs> next week this will become my main focus as I'm wanting to get carrots and scallions in the ground for winter. While I have the BCS out here, I can mow the lettuce down in the big garden. I bring the BCS into the garden and I chop the crap out of the bitter leaf lettuce. Next week this will get tilled in and spinach will most likely get planted in its place. The BCS gets dropped off over by the shop and I head back to the gardens to pick up the gator. It's up to Grammy's house to pick up the kids and go back to our house. Lincoln really wants to drive home, so he sits on my lap and I try and film and I control his steering a little bit so that we don't crash. He does pretty good for a three-year-old and we arrive safely. <laughs> we head inside and Cheddar escapes again. This is becoming a pattern. We spend a few minutes playing and then I put Lincoln to bed for his afternoon nap. He argues with me, of course, but trust me, he still needs some afternoon sleep. I could use an afternoon nap too, but there's always stuff to do inside. <laughs> Laundry needs started, zucchini pickles that I made yesterday for farmer's market need put away, some stuff from Amazon that came today needs to be put away also, and of course there's always dishes that need attention. 
After the chores are done, I do have a little bit of time to spend with the girls while Lincoln naps. The days go way too fast right now, and before I want to, I have to get ready to head to town for a city council meeting. Before I go, I make a quick dinner. We have a ham slice from our pork, green beans, and new potatoes with dill. Everything I make for dinner tonight came from the ranch, except for the green beans, but they are from a neighbor's garden. This meal is about as local as a person can get. Mike comes in from the field, and we all get to sit down together and have dinner. The kids think that the dill looks like grass, and Lincoln is crabby, so it's a pretty typical dinner at our house. <laughs> After we're done, I say goodbye and head into town. Megan, one of our other market managers, and myself attend the city council meeting as a proclamation is made declaring this week Gillette Farmers Market Week in honor of National Farmers Market Week. Megan and I both talked briefly about the impact our market has had on our local economy, and I shared my personal experience of how I would not have a local food business if it weren't for the farmer's market. After that, you would think I am done, but nope, I'm not. Since I'm in town, I head to Walmart. To celebrate Farmer's Market Week, I want to take ice cream to market. So it's off to buy supplies for ice cream making. By the time I get done at Walmart, it's almost dark when I head home. Once home, it's back into mom mode, and after I unload the groceries, I spend more time with the kids before we put them to bed. And again, you would think that we were done for the day, but there's still more to do. It's time for us to record our podcast. The podcast comes out on Friday, and we try and record it earlier in the week. So Mike and I sit at the computer and spend the next 45 minutes chatting together. We talk about the kids, farmer's market, city council, and YouTube. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Erin. And this is Beyond the Ranch. I have a great new joke for you. It's a knock-knock joke. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You start it. Knock-knock. Who's there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Welcome back. That was my Tuesday. Tuesday was ridiculously long, but that's pretty typical this time of year. I don't think that I've been to bed before midnight all week, and I'm up every day before six. But that's my life right now, and although it's busy, I love every minute of it. My biggest regret this time of the year is the lack of time that I have with the kids. But I make as much time for them as I can, and when they're not with me, they're with my mom or with Mike. They're always with family that loves them. I do hope that they understand when they're older that our summers are crazy busy, but our winter is much calmer. Today is a new day, and of course there's lots to do. Finish a video, wash vegetables from market, meet with the caterers for the farm to table dinner, make ice cream, feed the family, hang out with the kids, and please, can I get some sleep tonight? It's just a typical day. Thank you for hanging out with me for a day exploring the ranch life and escaping the ordinary. Mike has a new video for you on Sunday, and you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. I've got to go. <laughs> I've got work to do, but I'll see you next time on Our Wyoming Life.